All right, so I'm Jeff Cohen. Just go quick, go quick. You already have one in your hand. Pass it along. So today, we're, I'm going to talk to you about social media and using that as a platform to showcasing your interests and also eventually as a way to make money. I mean, this is this is the time to really start going after that. This video right here will explain a little bit about what I do. Cool. So that was a project I did for Gary Vaynerchuk uh, last year in September. And it was a project that I was trying to raise publicity for myself, trying to, to get my name out there and to just in, you know embark on a, a new journey where I start working with higher profile people. So it was a very important moment in my career. But I want to go back to when I was your guys' age. And when I was in high school, MySpace was where it was at. Did you guys ever do MySpace? Anyone? MySpace? My, no? Oh, Nobody had a top eight? Nobody? No? You didn't? I feel like you'd have a top eight, but no top eight. <laughs> What's your name? Dylan. Dylan. Okay, cool. Yeah, Dylan's got a top eight. But anyways, <laughs> when I was in high school and at this time, freshman, sophomore year, it just wasn't possible to do what I'm doing today. The infrastructure on our phones was not in place. We couldn't go to other places via social media because MySpace was more of just the same friends I had on, uh, in person I have online. But now, that's totally wide open. So when I was a student, I was really into soccer, and so I played soccer elementary, middle school, and then high school. And because of that, I couldn't do the art class to graduate until I was a junior. So I did the basic level art class when I was a junior, and that meant that I was in a class of all freshmen. So I didn't talk to anybody because, you know, if you're a junior and you're in a class of all freshmen, you're way too cool to talk to anyone, all right? That's just, that's just the lay of the land. And so because of that, I wasn't my normal squirrely self. Like, who in here just gets up in the middle of class, like, you, you back there, you're not even paying attention, like, you get up in the middle of class, don't you, and just walk around. I can tell Sometimes, you. Yeah. What's your name? Grady. Grady. Grady or Grady? G. G R. Okay, Grady. All right, so me and Grady, you know, like, we're on the same level, just getting up, walking around, and that's just what we did in class. But in art class, I was zoned in. Like, I wanted to make art. It wasn't... There was people to talk to, but I, I was focused on the art. And so I made, made art that, that junior year, and then was allowed to be in the AP art the, the next year. But I wasn't good. It was only because I was a, a good student, meaning I didn't talk back or do anything, that she let me in the advanced course and was able to you know, skirt by on that. Then I went to college, and this is kind of what it feels like to be your freshman year in college. You're just a narwhal, just yearning for coffee all the time, just crying and... No, it's, it's fine. You guys will have a good time there. But I wanted to be a pastor, so I went to CBU. That's where uh, Mr. Wilson and I went. And yeah, woo, Lancer. You guys are also Lancers, so you guys could be Lancers forever. Like, just for the rest of your life. What, is there a reason you guys have to wear the polos, or is it just like polo day? It's always polo day. It's always polo day, okay. Except for polo day. Hey, man, that's cool. That's cool. Don't worry about it. You can wear polo. You look cool. Lancer forever. But, uh, so I was suddenly become a pastor, and then in the summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I went to Uganda, Africa. And have, did any of you guys go to the Kenya trip? No, nobody in here? Okay, hey, whatever, this guy, these seats right here? No, it's fine. I went to Uganda, and it changed my life forever. It was at this point that I had been keeping a journal throughout my high school, end of high school and early, early college, of just my thoughts and what God was teaching me. But it was at this point on that trip that my journal switched from being a journal to becoming a sketchbook, that I was processing information that I couldn't output with words. It wasn't making sense. I, I wasn't understanding how to process what was going on in the world. When you go and travel and do different things, you see it from a different lens. And this is just what was happening to me, that I wasn't able to process it. So I came back from that trip a little bit jaded, but the Lord really gave me the ability to start drawing and to, to really commit to the sketchbook. And then through that, was able to find my way back to the faith in, in, in that I was able to express myself in a healthy way and also question, you know, why, why would God allow things like this to happen? And then also just, just explore that. So those are, those are good questions to have. And as a side note, if any of you guys, you know, let's say your home life isn't very good or you've just got a lot going on in your life, maybe a death in the family or something, and you can't really process what's happening, I would encourage you to find a creative outlet. You know, it could be writing, it could be 
um, making music, it could be drawing, or even going to the gym, like just, just an outlet for those kinds of emotions because we all have them and it's okay. But when we start to internalize them and not let them out, like that's when it, it's uh, depression starts to seep in and things like that. As I was growing in my sketchbook, I started to notice that I was getting a lot better. I was, I was continually doing something. It's like a muscle. The more you make, the more, the better you are. But I didn't want to share it online because I didn't want to be that guy. You know that guy? Uh, he's got a long pink shirt with like a dad hat and uh, you know little embroidered rose. You know, just like what's going on? He, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't want to be that guy. You know, if anyone in here is that guy on the weekend, like don't worry, I'm not knocking your style. Like that's cool. But I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be the guy who's just pushing my agenda on people. I wanted myself to stand out without standing out. It's this weird, it's this weird cool game that you play, right? But my friend, when I was painting, and this is one of the one of my first paintings that I was doing, and notice it's on wood, because I didn't even have enough money for canvas, because I, you know, I just didn't think I was that great. But my friend, Bradley, took a photo of my work, and this was in January 2012. And he posted it on Instagram. This is when Instagram was really small. And he did the hashtag art. And this picture changed my life. Not because it's very good. It's actually not a good picture. You know, it's got the, like, the vignette with the really saturated tones. But because of these people right here. So I know five out of the seven people who like this photo. Because, <laughs> you know, seven likes, I wasn't crushing it at all. But I didn't know this guy right here. And that's because he lives in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And that's when he clicked. I could reach people across the world through my phone. That I didn't have to be trapped by Riverside, California, Ontario, California, wherever I was at. Because the phone allowed me to go someplace else. So then I started being uh, unabashed in, in sharing my work. And this is a side note, that if you have friends who are sharing their work online, don't be a troll, don't be a hater. You know, even if it's not your type of thing, don't don't like squash them on it. Encourage the things that you do like about it. Encourage the things that you do notice that are good. If somebody's doing music and they're terrible, you know, don't don't squash it because everyone gets better the more they do something if they're committed to it. As I painted more and as I drew my sketchbook more, my skill increased and I was sharing a lot online, just continuing to branch out, building my community. And so I was able to paint this mural for Facebook last year, and the first time I painted for Facebook was in 2014, and then I did this gig, and now I continue to do gigs like this. I'll be painting for the new MLS team that's coming to Los Angeles in like two weeks, and I have a lot of, lot of gigs coming up in just different places around the globe. So, enough about me, because I'm just an old guy in a freaking whatever a walker thing is, <laughs> with tennis balls right here, which is always the funniest part to me, the tennis balls. Like, we don't have better technology than that. Let's talk about you, all right? Let's talk about you. When does real life start? Let's get a, let's get a poll. Some people in the, in the audience. When does real life start? And real life is whatever you define it to be. So, when does real life start? Me? You were just like... <laughs> <laughs> when does real life start? You, like, you like dodged it in your head. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. High school? Okay, high school? All right, what else? Whenever you wanted to. Whenever you wanted to. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what about you? Um, it already has. It already has. Interesting. <laughs> Retweet that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> what I want to interject is that we can pursue what we want now. That high school is a good time to start. I think most people's definition of real life is when they are autonomous over their own schedule. And that usually comes about when they're 18 and mommy and daddy aren't holding your hand through things. And if you guys are already at that level, like, that's cool. That's great. It's not, it's not necessarily an age thing, but society has really driven on us that 18 is about that time. But I'd like to say that, you know what? It's okay if you're 15 and you're a sloth like, trying to eat a donut. It's fine. Right now, you can start. Right? If you guys identify with this, that's cool. Because I do too. So here's the thing. Your interests, your interests don't really change all that much. Like what I'm trying to convince you guys is that by pursuing something right now is not a waste of time. Because let's say you do change your mind down the road, like you build your social profile around what you like at this moment, it's okay if you switch in the future. But really, your interests aren't gonna change all that much. Like I love playing soccer when I was just this gigantic headed, you know, 
Just, I don't know what this is. This, is just, this, this hairstyle right here, I used to call it house head. Because when I would fall asleep, like it would just come to a point on either side. And so it looked like my head was a house. And I had bangs before they were cool. And this was the rattlesnakes. My dad was the coach. And then, you know, two years ago, I went to the World Cup. Like, your, your interests don't really change all that much. I still love playing soccer. I play it every single week. I heard you guys had a FIFA tournament in here. Did any of you guys do that? You I did? Like, I lost Instantly, it. my favorite people Probably. in the class. Like, I love FIFA more than anything at this moment. So you can choose that one thing, and it's okay to pivot in the future. There is time to do everything, but I would recommend you got to choose one thing that you got to focus on. So what are some things that, that we like to do in this room? What do you like to do? Like it's a Saturday, you have time, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Like what? Netflix. Okay, because I was going to say, like you're staring at the wall. Like, <laughs> Netflix, okay, so watching Netflix, what else? What else we got? You, right here. Uh, or you, or other one. Just like, go ahead. Uh, sports. Sports, yeah. Name a specific one. Volleyball. Volleyball, okay. And you, yeah, you dodged it first, but we'll come back. What do you like to do? Yeah. Walk back and forth. Walk back and forth. The old walk back and forth. So let's just say you like dancing. How about that? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it that way. Give me something to talk about. One other thing. One other thing you like to do. Yeah. Drawing. Drawing. Okay. Hey. I got you. I got you, girl. It doesn't matter what you like to do. The, even the Netflix thing, that is something that you could build upon social. Like, Netflix seems almost like it's eating food where you're just consuming an, an item. And I'm not, like, knocking you. My wife loves Netflix. I mean, she... The, the thing that changed my, wife, my wife's life the most in the past three months was the skip intro button. Like, she's, she's oh, so happy okay. with that. We're watching Parks and Rec right now. Anyways. With that, you could build a social channel. Like, if I knew that you had great taste in shows, I, I would come to you for the next series that I want to watch. Like, that is an actual business that you could have. Yeah, it's weird, but it's, I mean, it's real. So here's some things that I think hold students back. And I think there's two key things that hold students, but also, I mean, people in general. Number one, the students think they're not unique. And that's a lie. That, that, that thought is a lie. You guys are all unique. Here's a, a, here's a Bible verse that, that explains this. Ecclesiastes 1.9. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. And this seems like a case that, okay, nobody's unique because it's all been done. Well, it levels the playing field. That means that everyone can have their own spin on something. Just because Beyonce has absolutely crushed the music industry doesn't mean that you can't start out your own musical talents. And just because Vincent Van Gogh Painted in a certain way doesn't mean that I can try my own style. You have to embrace yourself. You have to embrace the weird, embrace you. You have to be this guy, you know, safari living on a weird goat animal thing. I don't know what this animal is, but I love this imagery. You have to be that guy, because he's weird. Like, he's, I don't even know how this works, but it works. Number two, the students are lazy. And this one is actually true, and that's because Students, more so than the most people, is they rely on the social surroundings to influence what they do. So if all of your friends are really good at sharing online, you'll be good at sharing online. That's just something that your friends do, this is just who you are. But if your friends don't share online, and you start to build a social channel, they'll be like, what are you, what are you doing, dude? Like, why are you doing that? And will you stand up to that social pressure? I don't know. And so what that builds is apathy. You start to, you stop caring about what they don't care about. But if what's funny is when you leave high school, you realize just how much high school doesn't matter. It's, it's crazy. Like, it seems like it's so big right now, and there's so many things going on. But as soon as you leave, it's like, why was I even worried about that? You know, I, I want to do, do my own thing. So I'm saying start today. I, I think friends are a great aspect of high school. I miss hanging out with my buddies from high school. But I also wish that I started my art career back then, just going for it. Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. You actually have to do the work. You can't just talk about it. You can't just say, yeah, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. You actually have to put in the work. That, that's, that's a given. You have to draw. Uh, I see a lot of college students with this mentality, like, oh, when, it, when I do this, when I graduate, I'm going to do this. When I have more time, I'm going to do this. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, you have to do it now. You have to go for it. And this is the mentality of the map versus the machete. So 
So a map is given by someone like Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson gives out assignments, he tells you guys what to do. When you do an assignment that you like, you're stoked on it. When he gives you an assignment that you don't like, you still have to do it because you have an obligation to you know, fit into this system, the school system. Once school is over, nobody's giving you assignments in life. Nobody's telling you what to do, how to do it. Nobody gave me an assignment after college of, like, how do you reach out to someone like Gary Vaynerchuk? How do you build a social profile? How do you reach out to new people? It just doesn't happen. So you have to take this machete. I view it like we're all standing in front of this huge jungle, and this jungle is life. And we can wait for someone like Mr. Wilson or an authority figure to give us a map on how to get to where we want to go. But that's, that's not going to happen. Nobody gives you that map. So instead, pick up that machete and just start chopping through things, all right? So here we go. Just, people like this on the internet just make me laugh so much. Like, this is just, just pure internet. There is a, like skulls all over the machete. Yeah, you can have a YouTube channel just on that. The way you start is you have to choose yourself. You have to, you have to say, like, I'm worth this. I can do this. I can actually make that happen. And you start today. So you're asking, well, how do I start? You know, I'm 15, I'm a donut eating sloth, like, or a sloth eating donut. Well, I don't know which, which way it goes. Like a donut just eating a sloth, that would be a little bit This one's important. An audience is an audience no matter how small. So there's like 20 odd people in here. And let's say I had an Instagram profile. Yeah, hey, I'm glad you're alive. Let's say you had an Instagram profile and you only had 22 followers. That would look sad. You know, it would be like, oh, he only has 22 followers. But you guys aren't laughing at me that I'm speaking to 22 people. Like, if I had 22 people following me around everywhere I went, you'd be like, that guy's got an entourage. Like, that's pretty, that's pretty dope. But why do we knock the numbers? Like, why do we need 3K, 7K, 10K, 100? Like, why do we need those numbers? Those numbers are arbitrary. If we have the 14 right people, the, the 22 right people following us who love our work and are supporting us, encouraging us to go on, like, that's what matters. So you, you can have that audience you, you already have it. I know that each of us in this room m know more than 22 people. So you're already off to a good start. The other thing you have to realize is that nobody's listening. And that's true. Like, that's just a given. So break down the door. You guys know who Vincent Van Gogh is? Yes. Yeah, this guy right here? Death. Uh, death? No, he lost one ear. Oh, yeah, he lost one Cut off one ear. Okay. Don't hate me. Tribute check me again. Uh, <laughs> Walt Whitman, right here, is a, he's a famous poet. So, Vincent Van Gogh had the opportunity to tap in to a larger audience. He was around the same type of people that would later go out to put out Picasso, Paul Gauguin, like these dope artists who really influenced the rest of art history and lived successful lives. I mean, some of them, they had really, really incredible tastes, so they, they spent all their money, but still, like Picasso was extremely wealthy, and that's because he was putting out his work. You know, Vincent Van Gogh, he, he tries to kill himself by eating cadmium yellow paint. Like, do not eat cadmium yellow paint. Don't do it. Don't eat paint ever. That's not a good idea. I, I sometimes get paint in my mouth. It does not taste good. But he was going crazy because he didn't have anyone to speak to. He didn't have the audience. No one was listening to him. And he tragically kills himself. Walt Whitman, on the other hand, has a very similar circumstance. Nobody's listening to him. That's what happens. When you start something, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And this is true. Why should I care about your thing that you just started? Make me care. So Walt Whitman writes a series of poems called Leaves of Grass. And he self-publishes it. And this is in a time when self-publishing is looked at like, like politics. You know, it's just slimy. Why are you self-promoting? Why are you doing this? You should have a publisher do it. Well, a publisher didn't want his work. So he self-published it and sent it out to 400 people. One of the people was... Or, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who's also a famous poet. Ralph Waldo Emerson sends him a letter back saying, I greet you at the beginning of a great career. So Walt Whitman takes that, takes that sentence, I greet you at the beginning of a great career, and puts it on his book, Leaves of Grass. And that becomes the first blurb. You guys know what a blurb is? It's a, there's a book and it says, this is awesome, New York Times. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. So first blurb, Walt Whitman. He then sells it to a publisher, and then that kickstarts his career. So he broke down the door with this unconventional way of doing it. It's kind of a cheeky way to go about it, but yeah, cheeky. And uh, he just didn't let it let it get in his way. In this way, 
you have to be the broken chameleon. The broken chameleon stands out. The broken chameleon does not fit in with the system. The broken chameleon is noticed. That's, that's the whole goal of this, this exercise, that by being consistent and by putting yourself out there, it's okay to be a broken chameleon because that's what's going to get you further in life. You have to bring guacamole to the gunfight, all right? Meaning unconventional solutions to conventional problems. That, you know, the gunfight could end in both people shooting them, or the gunfight gun could end with a guacamole party, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's different, you know, you could have this guy just cooking up the guacamole, I don't know why he's boiling it, but, just, yeah, you can go for it. So going back to how you can start, is, well, what makes you happy? What, what makes you happy right now? I would say create that. Like, go for that option at this moment. And if it's something that you are really excited about and you want to try, definitely go for that. Go, go for something new. Something new is a great place to start because you'll be interested in it and you'll actually go for it. I'm this guy, this tall guy. I do like to dream big, but I need to, I need to be more like this one, just putting my head down and going to work. Because anything that you physically produce or anything that you bring to the world that actually exists, that's the only thing that can be judged. That's the only thing that can matter. I can't sell you my fire mixtape that's only in my head. Like, I have to get in the booth and actually spit. You know, I have to do what I need to do to make this happen. And consistency is more important over quality. It doesn't matter about creating the one right thing. It matters about creating a lot, creating over and over and sharing it online. So this recent, I, I recently did a project where I was trying to reach out to, to Casey Neistat. Do you guys know who Casey Neistat is? He's a YouTuber, it's okay. Uh, so I, I created this project, it cost me like $500 to make all the collateral to send out, and it's not necessarily gonna work. Here's the project. Dear Mr. Dear Mr. Nice Dad, you once said do what you can. And here's something I can't do right now. I can't paint a mural for you because you haven't said yes. Yet. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Jeff Govea and I paint murals. Like this. Actually, every single one of them is much better than this. You've currently got a mural deficient office. See there? All that white space? That's where a guy like me comes in. Here's what I can do for you, Casey. I can turn those white walls into a mural, and it's going to cost you zero dollars. When something's free, you, you take advantage of it. Actually, it's going to cost me money. It's going to cost about my flight, Matt's flight, our Airbnb, the paint, our gear. Let's talk about gear. Gear doesn't matter. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I was just kidding. For a grand total of negative seventeen fifty. But Casey, you're worth every single penny. What you do for this community of creators, of artists, of individuals is amazing. And I want to be a part of it. I want to create something on the walls of your office that shows that. But don't take my word for it. You'll be receiving about 200 postcards from some of my fans on Instagram. So, Mr. Neistat, will you let me do something I can't? Sincerely, Jeff Govea. So I printed out uh, postcards and then sent them to various people, about 300 and they were to copy a prompt and then put it in the mail. And so they, they did that, and he got the 300 postcards, but it just looks like it's gonna be a near miss. I talked to the office manager, and it just seems like it's not good timing. You know, that happens, that you go for something, and it just doesn't work out. But that doesn't mean you wait around for this missed opportunity. You just go again. So I created this other project where I had 90 paintings laying around, and I thought, well, it would be sick if I just killed them. Hi, I'm Jeff Govea, and this is the second really bad painting that I've made. And this is how I'm going to kill it. Let's begin.
I'm going to go back. And I just killed this baby. Join me next week as I kill this painting with this ink. So it's just a cheeky little way to reach out to the world. You, you have to do these, these things that will stand out. Most artists hold their work in such a precious manner that they would never consider destroying it. So if you take that, that there's a way to stand out right there just by doing something that most people would not do. You have to keep moving, you have to keep grinding, but most important, you have to realize that your identity isn't in what you make or what you produce. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14 says, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment, with every secret thing, whether good or evil. It doesn't matter what you, like, if it failed, the KC Neistat project doesn't define me as an artist, doesn't define me as a man. It's okay that it failed. Yes, it's going to suck that I have to explain to people, no, it didn't work out, like, it wasn't good timing. You know, I'm not, I'm not excited to have that conversation with a lot of people, but I'm excited that I went for it and that I tried. You know, you have to do those kinds of projects, and, and that's just what it takes. So thank you guys so much.